Time to check in with Dave Richmond for our April Bison basketball update here on Midco SN and our web blog. And uh, Dave, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to join us. Uh, it's hard to believe that we're already into April. It's time for the late signing period. I know you added a player in Chris Quayle, a, a former um, Wyoming Mr. Basketball in 2015. Talk about his process of going through and becoming a part of the Bison family here. Yeah, we're certainly excited about Chris. It's, you're right. It's hard to believe it's already been a month since the Summer League tournament. It's a two-week morning, morning period for me, you know, and, and then um, kind of peel back the layers a little bit, reflect, and time to move on. And, and Chris is certainly a great addition and, and definitely a step in moving on. Uh, Chris is first and foremost a great young man, uh, does extremely well in the classroom, uh, but another versatile player for us. I, th I think as we go forward, certainly a, a important to have someone that can handle the ball, take care of things. It's always nice to have a presence at the rim offensively and defensively but really when you look at the other three positions out there for us the two three four they're really versatile what we call positionless basketball players in a sense and, and Chris is a young man that played high school for his dad Dick and and he just really understands the game he's got great length uh, um, you know just just has an impact uh, in so many ways and we're really excited I think he'll fit right now right, real, real well into our Bison family. Amazing how he in the last two years, two shot up a few inches, put on 25 pounds, a guy that has really turned himself into a, a really the Division One basketball player because he didn't really have any D1 offers coming yeah, out of high school. Yeah, it was interesting on the visit and you're sitting there talking to Dad and, and I can't remember if it was 5'4 or 5'8 he was at one time, but he had size 15 shoes. And you're sitting there like, that, that's a straight clown looking guy you know when, when he's got that big of feet and, and just wasn't proportional to the rest of his body but again I think that's what we prided ourselves in doing in getting guys that uh, certainly are very talented but also have some potential to grow with physically um, to, to grow with their basketball mindsets and, and, and everything and you look at a guy like Tyson Ward I think he really fits that where you get some x-rays from him and they talk about his growth plates being wide open a guy like Paul Miller plays his first you know college game here and he had just turned 18 so I think that's a big part of what we do and not only looking for uh, what they are now but also what they could be as a finished product I know the recruiting road continues the process continues the grind continues I mean it's the first day of the late signing period Dave but that signing period now goes on for a few weeks and I know you got a couple scholarships to work with so what are you looking for and are you continuing to recruit? Certainly, we do have a couple scholarships, but that being said, we feel like we're in a great position. We have a couple young men in our program that, um, you know, Jared Samuelson, a walk-on at the, at, that, that I think is certainly at some point in his career going to earn some, some scholarship-wise. We're very pleased with uh, his progress and, and what he was able to give us, you know, this year. And so I don't think by any means it's a panic, but also we're, we're looking to continue to push the envelope. And if somebody we feel uh, can fits as a player, fits as a person, fits as a student, we're certainly going to take a hard look and we'll continue to do that the rest of the fall uh, but also want to give ourselves some options you know as we go forward in the 2018 class as well it's been over a month now since the season ended and I know I don't admit maybe the offseason doesn't go as fast for you as it goes for some of us I know you guys are back in the gym you're back in the weight room you know what is kind of going on right now with the current guys you have in the program yeah, I think it was important for as frustrated as you are, as, as I was in the way things ended, uh, it's important to reflect and understand it was a another good year. Um, we're not in it for good, we're in it for great, and it's just disappointing the way it finished. Um, to take a step back and, and realize that with the youngest group that we've had, we, we made another step forward in, in our mind. Um, give them some time to get their bodies right. We had some guys that were really banged up. You know, obviously Kai's ankle, what happened to him. A guy like Dylan Miller, he still isn't back on the court. He, he hadn't been practicing at all for us. AJ had a little hamstring. Everybody has a lot of nicks, bumps, and bruises. So I think the spring is really big from that standpoint, just getting your body back to right. And then you can go and push forward. And, you know, Jason Miller does such a tremendous job with our guys. And we're, we went right back at it, you know, coming back out of that spring break after about a two-week break for them to really let their bodies refresh. And um, they're, they're doing six about six hours a week in the weight room, some early morning ones, and then two hours of ball-in-hand stuff with myself and our staff. And, you know, just really trying to instill that toughness, that mindset, um, and just keep this thing moving forward with that high level of accountability that has been successful for us. I know scheduling is something – you're as a constant battle and it's hard to believe but I know you're already looking at the 2017 2018 schedule because you have to it's that tough for your program because of all the wins over the last mm -hmm. five years to find games home or road has that process started and do you continue to work on that year round 
That process, besides recruiting, is probably the, the, the two never-ending, I don't want to say battles because it's a part of it, it's, especially the recruiting part, it's something that you really enjoy, but the, the recruiting, or excuse me, the scheduling part is just an ongoing battle. It's a, it's a roller coaster, the ups and downs, and, and is, uh, what's been, what we've been fortunate to do and we have to try to maintain that is really try to almost schedule a year out to protect us with getting some home games. And as you schedule non-conference games, from an outsider's perspective, you're looking mainly for two things, first and foremost an opportunity to win. Second of all, a location where you might be a, a get some nice weather or you can put yourself in an area where there's some other recruits that they could see you play. And those two things in Fargo, North Dakota at NDSU haven't been very um, very, very helpful to do us scheduling. You know, we've been fortunate 37-3 and three in the three years that I've been, you know, the head coach here uh, to, at, at home. So home wins have been a good. Road wins for other teams have been tough to come by. Um, so that certainly it, it doesn't help our cause, which we're not going to trade. And then, you know, there's, you know, the, the weather uh, in Fargo. It is what it is. We, we enjoy it. Not a lot of other people do. And, um, you, you know, you look at it from a, a population standpoint, there's not a whole bunch of, uh, you know, just people around. And so population uh, obviously increases the recruiting pool as well. So we'll keep working. Got to be creative. Um, but, you know, Saul used to always remind me everybody always fills out a schedule. <laughs> That is something that yeah. Saul would say. Well, Dave, uh, thanks for the time, and we'll catch up with you here down the road. I appreciate it, Brian. We look forward to it. Thank you. All right. That is your April Bison basketball update.